video we're going to talk about the five different mounting styles of the Akon Industrial Curtain Track. These are galvanized steel tracks and you can see here's the, the five different styles that we uh, utilize to support the track. So in the video we're going to talk about how the track goes together, the type of track supports, and the type of roller hooks. The track comes in uh, various lengths, as you can see that's 2 foot, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10 foot lengths. And once these arrive, they simply go inside of a splice connector, and that connects them so you can form long runs or short runs. Um, it's very modular in its design, and it's easy to put together. The track can be field cut, so let's say you wanted a 7-foot uh, you know, track. You could order an 8-footer, and then when you get the track, just lop off the end with a, with a sawzall or a, or a hacksaw. Um, definitely made to be field cut for, for pre precise fitting of uh, locations. The uh, track supports, they're both a splice and a support. So you will notice when you get your quote, it'll call out uh, track supports, and these are also the splices. So these join two tracks together. So you can see we have a track coming from the left and the right, and there's a split. So the track splice goes over that, and it connects the two together. Now these can be slid down the track, so we want to space these about every five feet or so, and then you can just slide it down the track, and it would have a chain coming here supporting it. So this function is the same for all the different styles. Uh, they, they join the track, and they also hold the track up. And these are held together with set screws. So you have a little set screw on both sides, and then it goes down into the track. And this is a threaded hole. So you'll have a track coming this way, a track coming this way. And then you just use an Allen wrench, and you tighten those in there to secure it. It's a pretty snug fit, so uh, it's a good idea to take some, uh, some vice grips or some pliers or something and pinch the track, and it'll help you actually insert it in here. So it's, it's kind of friction-based, as well as a positive uh, set screw that holds it together. And uh, just a note, we do have detailed instructions on our website, which outline each of the different styles and how they go together, proper spacing of the track supports and where to put them. The uh, spacing, as I mentioned above, is about every five feet. So ideally, the distance between the track supports is going to be five feet. However, you can generally stretch that out to about 8 feet. If you stretch it out to 8 feet, and then you notice your track's got a little bit of a bow to it, you would simply just move this, the uh, track support in a little bit closer to the other one, and that'll uh, alleviate that problem. But uh, 5 feet as a general rule is how we quote it. So if you asked us for a quote um, uh, for X amount of linear feet, we would take your linear feet and divide it by 5, and that would give you your track support number. At the end of the track, we have the track end stops. Now there's two styles. You have an adjustable version like you see here. So you can see it's got a set screw and it goes up and it's pinching the top of the track and it's like a horseshoe shaped and it keeps the rollers from rolling out the ends of the track. These are nice because if you do cut your track, you can put them anywhere and they're quick to release and remove. So you could pop this out, replace your rollers if you wanted to. Very adjustable, very quick to install. If you have a wall that you're trying to dead end at, another option for you is the wall mount end stops. So you have an up tab and a down tab. And a down tab would be like this. And then you would anchor through the tab into the wall. And of course an up tab would be facing up like this. You anchor through there. Generally, the down tab is the safest because you can get right up tight to the ceiling if there is one. Um, but both of these work equally well. And also, if you have a freestanding track, let's say, um, or no, I'm sorry, not freestanding, a chain or cable or a threaded rod mount. So if you had a uh, horseshoe shape, let's say this was supported from above with cables like 20 feet high, and then you have a wall, you could use these and uh, place them at the ends and that'll help stabilize the track. Definitely not needed, but it does add some rigidity to the system. The track supports, there are various styles, and depending on your structure, that's gonna dictate which one's gonna work best for you. 
If you have a flat surface, uh, such as a, um, uh, a garage and it's drywalled, you could use these and they basically would just attach right to the bottom of the ceiling. Say that's a track there and there's a track and then you have four lag points in each of these and you just lag right into the ceiling. So probably one of our most common mounting styles. And the next style that you have is the wall mounted. So if you have a vertical surface such as a wall, let's say that's a wall there, and you just lag through here and then it holds up the track system. So this could be a wall, a stud wall, it could be a vertical beam, um, basically any flat uh, vertical surface. And here again you have the tab down option or the tab up. The threaded rod mount, these are most common with uh, factories and plants and uh, manufacturing assembly areas because generally they have a very high roof area. So what you would do is use a 3 8 inch rod and you would come through this hole here and use a washer and a nut. You can see that here. And this rod would go all the way up. And most times it would use the beam flange clamp because generally there's an I-beam up here and you could just use that clamp and it has the set screw on it. You just clamp that down, it pinches the flange and then your 3 8 inch rod screws right into the bottom of this. And then you drop it down into the track system. So this is a very efficient, um, relatively inexpensive way to hang curtains when you have a very high ceiling area. Let's see. So our next one is the chain or cable mounted. This works a lot like the threaded rod track, except you're using uh, cables or you're using chains. So at the, at the very top you see you have uh, three holes. And we would use a, a, um, a S hook, that which, which would go in one of these holes. And then from there you know you have your chain going all the way up. So you can get the chain from Akon. It's a 3 16 inch chain, which is our standard. Um, but you could also get that at a local hardware store to save some money on shipping costs due to weight. Um, you might even be able to get a little less expensive. But nothing special on this one. You can use a cable, you can use a chain, and it's a chain or cable mounted. The next style is an I-beam mounted. So here's that edge clamp we were talking about with threaded rod. So here's a, this is a good close-up view of it. So you'd have your I-beam like that and this is going to come down and pinch it. Um, this is this would be utilized when you're attaching directly to the I-beam instead of dropping down from above. Uh, very simple installation. You can see the distance once it's clamped onto a flange is approximately three, three inches down. Um, this brings up a good point also. When you're trying to determine the height of your curtain based on the curtain track being utilized, as a general rule, we take the distance from the floor to where you're going to actually attach it, and then you subtract three inches, and that would be your ideal curtain height. So let's say this was 10 feet. Um, you're going to want to use a curtain that is uh, 9 feet, 9 inches from top to bottom, as such. So that's just kind of a general rule that gets your curtain off the floor um, just barely or up to an inch, depending on which style of connection you're using from our tracks, so it's not dragging on the floor. The next style is a flush mount. It's very common customers ask us, you know, I don't want to use any of the track supports. Can I just drill right through the bottom of this track? And the answer to that is yes, you can. There is a, a little lip on this track as you can see here, which keeps these rollers uh, moving in a straight linear line. So you do have the ability to come in here and put some kind of a fastener that could go into your structure, um, as you see here. So this customer just drilled right into the bottom of this. It looks to be some kind of a wood beam. Um, so definitely an option, and you can paint the track as well. You can spray paint it. As it leaves Acon, it is a uh, galvanized steel unpainted. So in addition to those track supports you have a, a 
radius corner option and the end steps, which we've already talked about. Here's a good picture of how the end steps work going to a dead end of a wall um, as it's being supported from above with looks to be cables or threaded rod, I'm sorry. If you want to turn a corner with the track, our standard is a 90 degree radius corner. So this is a 24 inch radius. So if you wanted to have, um, let's say uh, 10 feet from here to here, what you're gonna wanna do is keep in mind that the, this is two feet and then this is two feet. So you would get eight feet of track plus take into consideration the two foot radius, so that's gonna give you your 10 feet overall from here to here. Um, also, you could get it a little longer and field cut it as I mentioned too. The radius corners do have a thread, or I'm sorry, a splice connector, which is attached to the end of it. So you don't have to get additional splices to attach to the straight track. It's already connected and it just shoves right on there. And it's got the hole for the set screws as well. The rollers that you get to choose from are steel or nylon. The nylon wheel is by far the most common and it has a load rating of 40 pounds. The steel wheel, in particular the two wheel, has 75 pounds of load rating and the quad has 125 pounds of load rating. So this is going to take care of 95% of everyone's needs and we, this is definitely the, the largest volume seller for us. When you'd want to use a steel wheel is maybe if you have a sandblasting applica application or you're using our track system more for a trolley than a curtain. So you're, you know, maybe you're holding up some uh, heavy bags or some kind of a component for an assembly process. Uh, these have ball bearings so they glide very nice, they're very smooth. They are a little louder than the nylon wheel because it's steel on steel, uh, but both of them work very well. And as far as the styles, the 16NR1 is our most common, and that is going to be $2.40, and anything above that's gonna be more expensive. Uh, we have larger hooks, smaller hooks, so you can choose which one works best for you.